What's up everyone, Naman here, and we're going to be doing another modern video. This one, it's going to be kind of a meta snapshot because we had a pretty large modern tournament recently, uh, specifically one that was at DreamHack Dallas. So because we are able to start getting a look at some of the deck lists people are playing in modern, we can kind of get a little bit of a better idea of what the meta looks like. Uh, compared to just seeing stuff online because online might be a little bit skewed because of the cost of certain tickets compared for cards compared to paper cards and you know things shift and fluctuate and, and everything like that within it also it does need to be uh, said that one tournament does not make a meta but this at least gives us a little bit of a pulse check on how the meta is overall so we're going to kind of go through there was like at least 200 or so deck lists, but we're going to be going through and just kind of highlighting a couple specific ones uh, that I thought, oh, this is interesting. Let's let's look through this. We'll, we'll do some discussions and stuff like that. So why don't we jump into our discussion about the modern meta? All right, so you can see it's just a list right now that we've got going on here of kind of the top uh, decks that were uh, piloted over the weekend. Uh, and there's that metagame summary that is directly above me here. Uh, and you can kind of say, oh, okay, these are the most popular decks, more or less. Like we could scroll down and be able to see the most played cards and stuff like that that might help give us a better snapshot. Now, these are the decks that um, played very well, they performed well. Some things to note that I think are really interesting uh, for this list in particular is eighth place and 13th place. These two initial outliers that pop up, uh, which we'll get into, but you can see kind of like, we'll see some Euron list, you'll see some Yawgmoth list, you'll see some Murktide list, you'll see some kind of uh, Rhino type style of, of list, like the Elementals, four color combo, the four color blank, Euron, like all those I, I feel like are, are pretty much very similar lists together, so we don't have to really worry too much, but you can see just the power of, of four color good stuff, right? I'm going to play the best four color cards in existence, and you know what? There's so many that I'm going to play Euron so I can play even more, and I'm still going to beat people because it's just such a, a powerhouse resource efficient deck and that's why it, it is up there and why it helped win the whole tournament was because it's so efficient with how it spends its resources where other decks are going to stutter and fall and run out of resources the consistency though which is nice is the deck number two of people bringing back that old school jun style uh, so i guess that can be listed in there with jun for number two demir mill for eighth and merfolk for 13th the rest of the stuff is what you would expect to see going to a modern tournament all right you're going to be seeing some um hammer time stuff you're going to see some yagma stuff you're going to see some murktide stuff you're going to see some elemental slash euron style of decks that's that's normal but what's fun and great about modern is that there are those outlier decks that can still do well specifically for those players that practice with them if you are going to go to a tournament and you have the option of playing the best deck that you've never played before uh or playing a deck that you have more practice and experience with i always recommend players take the deck that they have more practice and experience with just because you know the lines you know how to navigate it easier than if you're playing a deck that is just good you might make more mistakes have issues with sideboarding things like that where the deck that you're understanding you're not gonna you're gonna be able to make less mistakes and be able to pilot that better and i think that's a sh big component of why this Demir Mill, why this Merfolk player were able to kind of lock themselves in within that top 20 spot, right? 13th, 8th place in particular is, is they knew their decks, they knew what they were doing, and it helped. And plus, we see an elemental list, right? We, we're going to see 
uh, Murktide list, there's two decks that care a lot about islands, so having unblockable creatures that are just constantly putting pressure on an opponent can be scary. And, you know, the Euron's list has a lot of efficient removal, uh, but eventually you, you're going to get run over or have to start trading inefficiently there and, and two for one and you're doing different things like that. So, you know, that that's pretty interesting. Let's, let's look real quick because, again, this is just sort of snapshot stuff. Uh, we'll just quickly look at first place. We'll quickly look over um, kind of our top our top list, right? These are the top ones that you should expect to see um, if you're running into stuff. So four color elemental blink, all right? Uh, it's that kind of we're taking the best cards within that four color like we've talked about, right? Solitude, Fury, Omnath, of course, Eternal Witness, Endurance, Icy Fine Caudal. It's cool to see this finding a home again because it was so powerful and modern modern for a, a, kind of a period right afterward uh, of Modern Her yeah, Modern Horizons 1 getting printed. We got to see a lot of people trying to play with it and find you know value out of it, and it kind of fell off, and now we're starting to see it back. Renin 6 is a big part. Teferi is a big part, right? We can go into our spells like the blink effect of Ephemerate. You've got more removal uh, just kind of built in. That's that's the power of this deck is it's just kind of, hey, I I have removal spells. I've got removal creatures. I've got kind of value engines built into here, ways to like draw cards. So it's it's a powerful list, and you're going to see it all the time. All right, it's it's 100 not going anywhere. Azura's hammer, right? Hammer time we've we've highlighted previously, but again, it's basically what Affinity turned into. Affinity kind of fell apart with the banning of Mox Opal and the, kind of that the speed at which it played wasn't as effective in our current iteration of Modern, where this is better because of just the ability to get this kind of big hammer online and just beat people to death. So uh, the main reason to shift it into this blue-white is the addition of reality chip. That's kind of pushed people uh, over the edge into that that way of thinking. But yeah, the whole idea, if you're going to be going to a modern event, expect to run into at least one or two Hammer Time players. It's very powerful. Same thing with our Golgar Yawgmoth. Uh, this, you know, when we're thinking about core-based decks, they have evolved and changed over time in... Uh, modern, right? Um, at some point, I'm going to go through the history of it, starting with Birthing Pod and, and working our way up, because it's really cool to be able to see how uh, cord-based decks have evolved over time. Now, this is that very efficient machine with Yogmoth, right? I'm using all of these, you know, draft chaff. If we would talk about it, of these creatures that you wouldn't think would be very powerful in modern like young wolf but it's this undying mechanic that makes them so powerful in combination with um having things that will remove those counters right and that's where yogmoth comes in and in addition to having things like blood artists you can just drain people out so i really like the deck i think it's awesome um but i like core based decks so grist has been added into there um and we're seeing you know, four of is kind of the way to go. Some variation of it, right? I know people were immediately starting to test it as one of, two ofs, and as things progress, they go, well, this card's just good. I'm going to just run more of them. So, uh, is it Murktide? We've also talked about um, it's just the best blue-red cards. It's very fast, out the gate, Dragon Rage Channel is in there, Ragmon's in there, right? I've got a lot of good early one-drops in here. The blue spells that we're running, right? The, a newest addition, Ledger Shredder, is really powerful because you're playing so many spells. You're doing this kind of efficiency grind that you can fill up your graveyard, make this scarier, draw cards, discard cards, put plus one counters on it. it it's really good. Um, Murktide Reagent, that's that kind of big, hey, payoff, we're going towards it. And then our spells are just like efficient, fast spells, right? We're going to see counter spells in here and removal spells. And that's kind of kind of the name of the game. Team of Rhinos, we've also talked about. Uh, this is the way of taking advantage of our cascade mechanics. All right, so we're saying Shardless Agent, legal and modern. Let's see what kind of fun stuff we could do with it. And it's all about making rhinos. All right, two, four, four rhinos. It's a good deck. It can kind of get out early against some people, um, but 
it doesn't have that staying power that something like the elemental deck has it's got a lot of that same uh, powerhouse behind it of saying we've got these cool new uh, tools to be able to use right fury subtlety that sort of stuff but at the same time your tools can only get you so far um, so it's it's strong it's going to be consistent and be in the meta as something that you might have to fight but it's not going to be as obvious as some of the other lists but uh, is worth mentioning in that regard so let's talk real quick about some of the other lists like we can scroll down because i do want to just kind of show you just like a lot of those same decks over and over again are going to be showing up tron boom showing up in here living end is the other one that's rising up within the meta as as a big kind of pusher uh i just kind of again hey i'm going to be doing something and and you're not going to really be able to mess with me but as we see kind of more um players start running endurance uh main board or sideboards it might kind of help to keep uh the living end decks at bay we'll we'll see um burn sneaking in there as well you can see some boros burn boros burn and burn decks in general are just one of those that are always always going to be around in a, in a meta anytime you go to a shop or anything you're going to see at least one burn deck there uh but let's talk about the fun decks real quick right Jun's starting to cr crop back up uh you know you can see there's a couple here so it's pretty similar to what you'd expect to see just efficient removal spells backed up by disruption from thought sees inquisition that sort of thing uh and you have efficient creatures that kind of get bigger and better it's shifted into that hey let's run ragman because ragman's the best right uh, and you'll see kind of different variations of how people are running it but the shell for jun is still going to be consistent tarmogoyf renin six um you know inquisitions thought sees that sort of stuff I, riveteer's charm is a cool addition that we're starting to see uh players play around with you know, I'm, I'm very interested to see where, where it's going to go from there. But uh, the Demir Mill and the Merfolk are what I'm most excited for. So let's let's talk about the Demir Mill uh, because I love this deck and I still play it. Um, so creature-wise, it's just the same creature, essentially. Eight copies of the same creature. Slight variation in the amount of cards that are milled, but still. Hedron Crab in here. Uh, mills top three. Rune Crab uh mills three all right and it's just slight variations in this sense of okay this is a o2 this is an o3 all right so very very cool same same idea we're just going to be milling and the idea behind it is you're going to be running a lot of lands that will help you do that right that means our fetch lands vista we've got the um different little bounce lands in here as well so it's it's what you'd expect field of ruin is another good one because you can start destroying your opponent's things and you can get your own lands you see we do run a few more than most people with basics because of that uh, and steering bridge big part of it but the spell list that we see is pretty much similar to what the old school version is with few exceptions old school speed mill style of play uh, would run those like two mana spells that would mill like 10 cards and now we're at this point in time that that's not e that's not enough because we have three mana spells that are doing better work than that right fractured sanity i pay three and you're going to be uh, milling 14 cards now so one extra mana for four more cards you might say oh is that really worth it if worst case scenario i can cycle it and still make you mill four so I'm, I'm able to replace itself and that that double duty is, is a big reason why people are running that tasha's hideous laughter an all-star uh, each opponent exiles cards from the top of their libraries until they've exiled cards with a total manual value of 20 or more so very very good um archive trap works really well with our um crab plan of being able to blast their lands with field of ruin and then when they're f searching whether they're playing their fetch lands or not they're milling 13. uh it's kind of backed up with kind of protection spell fatal push uh and drown in the lock removal slash counter spell in that regard surgical extraction is the clutch thing if you're going to be playing mill is to be able to mill something and then strip away strip away all other copies of it because you can pay no mana for it and pick something in their graveyard and get rid of it now you can choose specific lands not basics but you can choose fetch lands you can choose shock lands so you can disrupt mana bases with this 
I usually target annoying cards that are going to bother me, um, you know, threats or things like that to, to target, but you know, you can, you can adjust it as, as need be. All right. So Merfolk's next. Let's go. Merfolk here. So most creatures we've seen, everybody's running lots of removal and interactions where this one's saying, I'm going to be running a lot of creatures we've got our force negation in here though so protection it's this list because it's mono blue is still running aether vial we've got a couple spreading seas just in case uh but it's look at this we it's all about cheap efficient creatures and us getting out there early and getting there fast and and putting in work uh merfolk trickster is amazing being able to uh tap down people's creatures drawing cards glass Cool. Mimic is just another lord that is added in here. Now, here's a big push for running this, right? Stuff like this that uh, messes with our opponent's plan of being able to do this. Um, so other merfolks you control have ward one. So being able to say, hey, if you are going to be targeting me with stuff, you have to pay extra mana. And it makes our opponent's removal spells worse because as long as we have something like this out, them forcing to be able to cast a spell to target one thing is basically forcing them to only do one spell to target one thing where they might be able to say oh i can you know pay one mana for this two mana for that and kill two things in a turn and now i have to pick and choose what to target so um very very cool to see subtlety is also in here uh that's a nice little hey let's sit here and draw some cards right refill and sometimes the aggro based decks like that run out of fuel and that kind of helps them re refill their hands so very cool to see. Now, uh, as the Infect player, I did have to do a, a quick search, and it's all the way down uh, at 98th place. But we get to see a lot of those cool other decks that are kind of near the end of this list, right? Like we're seeing some um, Rakdos Reanimators on here. We've got some Tron on here, um, on a green Tron, right? So I, you know very happy to see at least in the top 100 <laughs> in fact but it's just it just can't keep up in in the current uh meta but it is uh rocking out that salt eye so much heavier on the the creature side of things here but uh yeah did did want to make a note of that because you know it's it's important to kind of keep an eye on on those fun decks like that so uh let me know what decks you guys uh like there's some amulet titan in here Escape shift stuff like that if this is something that you guys like of us going through and just kind of doing quick meta pulse checks on what's going on with the meta let me know we might actually add this to our our stream schedule of stuff since we are back to streaming if you guys haven't seen uh we are back doing our magic content on mondays twitch.tv slash the real man man you guys can be able to check out all that cool crazy and fun stuff that we've got going on over there um so you guys will be able to see this month we're going to be cracking some packs and trying to start making a cube uh, so on the 27th of june you guys could be able to catch that out so if you guys aren't yet please consider subscribing following all that good stuff but thanks so much for tuning in and watching guys and i'll see you guys next game